The reading of Genesis chapter 11. With side notes. King James Version. Easy to understand. Holy Bible Audiobook. Sponsored by Lunsford's Daily Sunday School. Produced by W. Matthew Harris Senior Productions. Chapter 11. The Tower in Babel shows that people are proud. Chapter 11 verses 1 through 4. Verse 1. All the people on the earth had one language, and they had one set of words. Verse 2. When people moved to the east, they found a plain in the country called Shinar, and they stayed there. Verse 3. These people said to each other, Let us make bricks. And let us. The reading of Genesis chapter 11. With side notes. King James Version. Easy to understand. Holy Bible Audiobook. Sponsored by Lunsford's Daily Sunday School. Produced by W. Matthew Harris Senior Productions. Chapter 11. The Tower in Babel shows that people are proud. Chapter 11 verses 1 through 4. Verse 1. All the people on the earth had one language, and they had one set of words. Verse 2. When people moved to the east, they found a plain in the country called Shinar, and they stayed there. Verse 3. These people said to each other, Come, let us make bricks, and let us bake them hard. So they used bricks as stones to build with, and they used bitumen black stuff from the ground, in order to stick the bricks together. Verse 4. Then they said, Come. Let us build a city for ourselves. Let us build a tower, tall, narrow building, with its top in the sky. We will make ourselves great. Then we shall not scatter over all the earth. Verse 5. Then the Lord came down to see the city and he came to see the tower that the people were building. Verse 6. The Lord said, Look, they are all one group of people. They all have the same language. This is only the beginning of what the people will do. They will be able to do everything that they plan to do. Nothing is impossible. Verse 7. Come, let us go down. We will mix up the people's language then they will not be able to understand each other. Verse 8. Then the Lord scattered them from there over all the earth, and they stopped building the city. Verse 9. So the city was called Babel because there, God mixed up the language of all the people on the earth. From there, God scattered them over all the earth. Verse 10. This is the history of Shem's family. When Shem was 100 years old, he became Orpak Shah's father. That was two years after the flood. Verse 11. After Orpak Shah was born, Shem lived for 500 more years. Shem had other sons and daughters. Verse 12. When Orpak Shah had lived for 35 years, he became Shelah's father. Verse 13. After Shelah was born, Orpak Shah lived for 430 more years. Orpak Shad had other sons and daughters. Verse 14. When Shelah had lived for thirty years, he became Eber's father. Verse 15. After Eber was born, Shelah lived for four hundred and thirty more years. Shelah had other sons and daughters. Verse 16. When Eber had lived for thirty-four years, he became Peleg's father. Verse 17. Then Eber lived for 430 more years, and he had other sons and daughters. Verse 18. When Peleg had lived for 30 years, he became Ru's father. 
Verse 19. Then Peleg lived for 209 more years, and he had other sons and daughters. Verse 20. When Ru had lived for 32 years, he became Sirug's father. Verse 21. Then Ru lived for 207 more years, and he had other sons and daughters. Verse 22. When Sirug had lived for 30 years, he became Nahor's father. Verse 23. Then Sarug lived for 200 more years, and he had other sons and daughters. Verse 24. When Nahor had lived for 29 years, he became Terah's father. Verse 25. Then Nahor lived for 119 more years, and he had other sons and daughters. Verse 26. After Terah had lived for 70 years, he became Abram's, Nahor's and Haran's father. Verse 27. This is the history of Terah's family. Terah was the father of Abram, Nahor and Haran. Haran was Lot's father. Verse 28. Haran died in a city called Ur. That was in the country where the people called Chaldeans lived. It was the country where Haran was born. Haran's father Terah was still alive. Verse 29. Abram and Nahor both married. Abram's wife was called Sarai and Nahor's wife was called Milka. Milka was Haran's daughter. Haran was both Milka's and Iska's father. Verse 30. Sarai was barren. That means that she had no children. Verse 31. Ter took his son Abram, his grandson Lot, Haran's son, and his sons, Abram's wife Sarai. Together they went out from Ur, where the people called Chaldeans lived. They planned to go to the country called Canaan. But when they came to the city called Taran, they settled there. Verse 32. Terah's whole life lasted 205 years. He died in Haran. Side Notes. All the people spoke the same language because they were all Noah's descendants. And they wanted to live together. They were proud. They wanted to be more powerful. So they built a great city. But God had not told people to live together. He told them to move across the world, Genesis chapter 9 verse 1, so that the whole world would have inhabitants. So the people were not obeying God's commands. In fact, they were trying to oppose God. God did not allow them to continue the construction of that city. He confused their languages and he ended their unity. They could not talk with each other. So they had to move to different places. The chapter continues with the story of Shem's family. People's lives began to be shorter now. At last, the writer mentions Abraham. Abraham was different from other people because Abraham believed God. This fact may not seem important when we have discussed the history of the whole world. But, for the writer of the book of Genesis, this fact was vital. The book of Genesis always concentrates on the lives of people who please God. Already, we have read about Abel, Enoch and Noah. And Abraham would join the list of men who pleased God. Their lives had a vast effect on the relationship between people and God. God said that all the people in the world would receive a blessing by means of Abraham. Genesis chapter 12 verse 3. Notes on the verses. Verse 2 people moved to the east. Or that may mean in the east. Earlier, the Lord sent Cain away. And then Cain too went towards the east. Verse 3. Bitumen is a black stuff that people get from the ground. At that time, people started to use it like cement. They stuck bricks together with it. Today, people use it as a surface for roads. Verse 4. The people did not ask what the Lord wanted. They wanted to build for themselves. They were not building the city in order to bring honor to God. They wanted to be famous themselves. God makes new languages and he scatters people. Chapter 11 verse 5 through 9. Verse 5. The Lord showed how great he is. People thought that they could reach up to the sky. They thought that God was in the sky. But God came down to the earth to see their tower. When we compare the tower with God, it was very small. 
and it was not very important, because God is so great. It is God who makes people great. We cannot make ourselves great in God's opinion. People think that they are great and powerful. But God is in control. He confused their language and he scattered them. So, he stopped the people before they could become more evil. He stopped them before they could make more trouble. The writer has told the story about the tower in Babel in very easy language. He uses many words that sound like other words. Some parts of God's reply sound very like the people's speech. But God's reply means something very different. After Adam and Eve had sinned, they could not talk with God as easily as before. Now, people could not talk to each other easily. Verse 9. Babel means confused. Shem's family, Abraham's ancestors, chapter 11 verses 10 through 32. Verses 10 through 26. The history of Shem's family. People's exact ages here are not clear, but that is not very important. This history of Shem's family may not be complete. Some people may be grandsons rather than sons. Again, it is important to see that this is a story about real people. We can compare it with the account about Adam's family. Look at Genesis chapter 5. We can see that the people in Shem's family were younger when they had children. And they did not live as long. In Genesis chapter 6 verse 3, God said that he would place a limit on the length of people's lives. In verse 26, Abraham, Nahor and Haran were born at different times. Here, the story about Abraham begins. Abraham was the father of the family that God chose specially. Abraham's brother was called Haran. And also the place where Terah stayed to live was called Haran. Genesis chapter 11 verse 27 to chapter 12 verse 9. These verses are very important. They show how God was making his plan happen for people. He chose Abraham's family as his special family. Then he chose the nation of the Jews. Then he did something special for all nations. God was a friend to Abraham. And God made special promises to Abraham and his family. Here we also read about the country that the Lord promised to Abraham. Verse 27. Haran was probably Terah's oldest son. It seems that Abraham was looking after Lot. Verse 29. Sarai was Abraham's half-sister, Genesis chapter 20 verse 12. In other words, Sarai and Abraham had the same father, Terah, but Sarai's mother was not Abraham's mother. Later, God forbade men to marry a half-sister. Nahor married his brother's daughter. God never forbade that. Verse 30. At that time, if a woman had no children, she was very sad. And sometimes people thought that the woman should be ashamed because of that. God sometimes made women be without children because they had sinned. Genesis chapter 20 verse 18. However, there are also several women like Sarah, Hannah and Elizabeth in the Bible. They did not have any children for a long time, but God blessed them. Verse 32. Abraham probably left Haran many years before Terah died. Terah was not a part of God's plan for Abraham and his descendants. For that reason, the writer tells us that Terah died in Haran. Clarifications The Tower in Babel Verse 1 At this time, everyone who lived on the earth spoke one language. They used the same words. Verse 2 People moved to the east. They reached a large flat piece of land called Shinar. They stayed there to live. Verse 3. They said to each other, We should make bricks and cook them until they are hard. These people used bricks instead of stones to build houses. They used tar to hold the bricks together, instead of cement. Verse 4. They said, Let us build a city to live in. We should also build a very tall tower. The tower will go up into the heavens. Then we will always be famous. If we do that, we will not have to separate and go to live in different places on the earth. Verse 5. But the Lord came down to see the city and the tower. 
he saw that the people had started to build them. Verse 6. The Lord said, Because they all speak the same language, they are able to do this. If they can do this together, they may decide to do whatever they want. Verse 7. Now we must go down to them. We must make their language become confused. Then they will not be able to understand each other. Verse 8. So the Lord separated the people from one another. They went to live in different lands all over the earth. They stopped building the city for themselves. Verse 9. That is why people called the city Babel. It was because the Lord confused all the people of the world and he gave them different languages to speak. From that time, the Lord separated the people from each other so that they lived in different places all over the earth. Shem's family. Verse 10. This is the report about Shem and his family. Two years after the deep water went away from the earth, Shem was 100 years old. He became the father of Arphaxad. Verse 11. After Arphaxad was born, Shem lived for 500 years. He had other sons and daughters. Verse 12. When Arphaxad was 35 years old, he became the father of Shela. Verse 13. After Shela was born, Arphaxad lived for 403 years. He had other sons and daughters. Verse 14. When Shelah was 30 years old, he became the father of Eber. Verse 15. After Eber was born, Shelah lived for 403 years. He had other sons and daughters. Verse 16. When Eber was 34 years old, he became the father of Peleg. Verse 17. After Peleg was born, Eber lived for 430 years. He had other sons and daughters. Verse 18. When Peleg was 30 years old, he became the father of Ru. Verse 19. After Ru was born, Peleg lived for 209 years. He had other sons and daughters. Verse 20. When Ru was 32 years old, he became the father of Sarug. Verse 21. After Sarug was born, Ru lived for 207 years. He had other sons and daughters. Verse 22. When Sarug was 30 years old, he became the father of Nahar. Verse 23. After Nahar was born, Sarug lived for 200 years. He had other sons and daughters. Verse 24. When Nahar was 29 years old, he became the father of Terah. Verse 25. After Terah was born, Nahor lived for 119 years. He had other sons and daughters. Verse 26. After Terah was 70 years old, he became the father of Abram, Nahor and Haran. Terah's family. Verse 27. This is the report about Terah and his family. Terah became the father of Abram, Nahor and Haran. Haran became the father of Lot. Verse 28. While Terah was still alive, his son, Haran, died. Haran died in Ur, the land of the Chaldeans. That was where Haran had been born. Verse 29. Abraham married Sarai. Nahor married Milcah. Milcah was Haran's daughter. Haran was the father of Milcah and Iscah. Verse 30. Sarai could not give birth to children. She did not have any children. Verse 31. Ter took his son Abram and his grandson Lot. Lot was Haran's son. Ter also took Abram's wife Sarai. They all left Ur, the land of the Chaldeans. They began to go to Canaan. But when they came to Haran, they stayed there. Verse 32. Ter lived for 205 years. Then he died in Haran. Verse 33. 